68 million years ago, Earth's deadliest playground wasn't the scorching plains where T-Rex ruled. It was the frozen wasteland of the Arctic Circle. While most prehistoric giants claimed their kingdoms in warmer climates, one Tyrannosaur dared to master the art of killing in a land of eternal darkness and bone-chilling cold. Imagine standing in its territory. The air burns your lungs at minus three degrees Celsius. Visibility drops to zero in howling blizzards. And somewhere in that white void, a 35-foot titan is tracking your scent. Nanuxarus, the Arctic's forgotten tyrant, turned 120 days of winter darkness into its personal hunting ground. But how did this forgotten tyrant dominate a land where survival seemed impossible? And what deadly adaptations made it the ultimate predator of the frozen north? When paleontologists ventured into Alaska's remote Prince Creek formation in 2006, they weren't expecting to find anything revolutionary. After all, who would expect to find a Tyrannosaur at the top of the world? The Prince Creek Formation itself is a challenging place to conduct paleontological research. Located hundreds of miles from the nearest city, accessible only by helicopter, and subject to some of Alaska's most extreme weather conditions. Yet, it's precisely these harsh conditions that have made it a goldmine for polar dinosaur discoveries. The team was working through layers of rock deposited during the late Cretaceous period when they made their extraordinary find. The fragments they unearthed, a right maxilla, upper jaw, parts of the skull roof, and a left dentary, lower jaw. Might not sound like much, but to trained paleontologists, these pieces told an incredible story. The bones showed distinctive features that immediately identified them as belonging to a tyrannosaur, but there was something unusual about them. Initially mistaken for its better known cousins like Albertosaurus or Gorgosaurus, this discovery would prove to be something far more intriguing. The specimen showed subtle but significant differences from other known tyrannosaurs, differences that would eventually lead to its classification as an entirely new genus. These included unique features in its skull structure, such as distinctive bony ridges above its eyes and an unusual arrangement of its frontal bones that had never been seen in other tyrannosaurs. The animal was eventually named Nanuxaurus, meaning polar bear lizard. The name combines Nanuk, the Inupiaq word for polar bear, with the Greek saurus, meaning lizard. And while the lizard part isn't entirely accurate, the polar bear comparison is fitting. This was the apex predator of the ancient Arctic. The discovery was particularly significant because it challenged our understanding of Tyrannosaur distribution and adaptation. Before Nanuxaurus, most scientists believed that large predatory dinosaurs couldn't survive in polar regions due to the extreme conditions. Finding a Tyrannosaur this far north suggested that these prehistoric predators were far more adaptable than previously thought. It raised fascinating questions. How did they survive the long polar nights? What adaptations allowed them to thrive in such extreme conditions? And what might this tell us about the diversity and resilience of dinosaur species across different climates? Recent studies have completely transformed our understanding of Nanusaurus's size, making it one of paleontology's most dramatic revisions. What was once thought to be a modest 20-foot predator has now been revealed to be a true giant, potentially reaching lengths of up to 30 feet. Imagine three school buses lined up end to end. That's roughly the size we're talking about. This dramatic size revision has given Nanuxaurus one of paleontology's greatest comeback stories, elevating it from medium-sized tyrannosaur to one of the largest members of its family. The size estimation process itself tells a fascinating story of modern paleontology at work. Initially, Scientists based their calculations on fragmentary remains, primarily skull pieces, using established scaling relationships from better known tyrannosaurs. But as new analytical techniques emerged and more comparative data became available, researchers realized they had significantly underestimated this Arctic giant. 
suggest a creature weighing up to two tons, rivaling the mass of some of the largest known Albertosaurus specimens. What makes this size particularly remarkable is where Nanuxaurus lived. Traditionally, paleontologists believed that large predatory dinosaurs would have struggled to sustain themselves in polar regions due to seasonal food scarcity. The fact that Nanuxaurus not only survived but grew to such impressive proportions challenges these assumptions. It suggests that the Arctic ecosystem of the late Cretaceous was far more productive than previously thought, capable of supporting apex predators of exceptional size. When compared to its Tyrannosaur relatives, Nanuxaurus's size becomes even more interesting. While not quite reaching the dimensions of Tyrannosaurus rex, which could grow to around 40 feet, it wasn't the medium-sized predator early estimates suggested either, with updated analyses placing it closer to 25 to 30 feet. Nanuxaurus sits comfortably alongside predators like Gorgosaurus, which typically measured around 25 to 26 feet. The implications of its size extended beyond just physical dimensions. Larger body size in modern animals often correlates with better cold tolerance, as a higher mass to surface area ratio helps conserve body heat. This principle, known as Bergman's rule, might explain why Nanuxaurus grew so large in its polar habitat. Its size would have provided a crucial advantage during the long, dark Arctic winters, helping it maintain a stable body temperature despite the harsh conditions. But size came with its challenges. A larger body meant higher energy requirements, which would have been particularly demanding in an environment where food availability fluctuated dramatically with the seasons. This suggests that Nanuxaurus must have developed highly efficient hunting strategies and possibly sophisticated metabolic adaptations to survive. Recent studies of its bone structure indicate it might have had a unique growth pattern, potentially growing more slowly than its southern relatives, but ultimately reaching a larger size, a pattern seen in some modern Arctic animals. Intriguingly, despite its impressive adult size, juvenile Nanuxaurus fossils tell us that young individuals were relatively small and lightly built. This suggests a dramatic growth phase during development, raising fascinating questions about how these animals survived their vulnerable early years in such a challenging environment. Some paleontologists speculate that juveniles might have hunted different prey than adults, reducing competition within the species and allowing the population to make more efficient use of available resources. But size isn't what makes Nanuxaurus truly remarkable. It's how it thrived in one of Earth's most challenging environments. During winter, this predator endured 120 days of near-total darkness and temperatures hovering around 26 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 3 degrees Celsius. To put that in perspective, that's like living in your freezer for four months straight, hunting in almost complete darkness. How did it manage? Scientists believe Nanuxaurus possessed some remarkable adaptations. Its sense of smell might have even surpassed that of T. rex, already known for having a nose that could rival a bloodhound's. Imagine being able to detect a meal from kilometers away, even through howling blizzards and bitter cold. While its massive size and keen senses were impressive, Nanuxaurus's bite was its true claim to fame. The secret to its devastating power lay in its skull structure, a masterpiece of natural engineering. Unlike many other predatory dinosaurs with long, narrow skulls built for speed and precision, Nanuxaurus possessed the Tyrannosaur family's characteristic, robust, wide skull design. This wasn't just for show. The broader skull allowed for larger jaw muscles and created a more stable platform for delivering bone-crushing bites. The teeth themselves were remarkable weapons. Though slightly smaller than T. rex's famous chompers, Nanuxaurus's teeth were still impressive, reaching lengths of over four inches or 10 centimeters. But size wasn't everything. These teeth were engineered for maximum killing efficiency. They were deeply serrated, like prehistoric steak knives, allowing them to saw through flesh and crack bones with devastating effectiveness. The curved shape of the teeth 
meant that once Nanoxorus bit down, its prey wasn't going anywhere. With force estimates ranging from 10,000 to 40,000 newtons, its bite could easily crush through bone and tissue. To put that in modern terms, if a crocodile's bite is like a hydraulic press, Nanuxaurus's bite was like an industrial-grade car crusher. This bite force was particularly impressive given the cold environment. Most modern predators actually lose bite strength in cold conditions, but Nanuxaurus seems to have maintained its powerful bite year-round. The way Nanuxaurus used this impressive dental artillery was equally sophisticated. Unlike some predators that rely on quick, precise strikes, Nanuxaurus likely employed what paleontologists call the bite and tear method. It would clamp down with those powerful jaws, then use its muscular neck to wrench backward, creating devastating wounds. This hunting style was particularly effective in the Arctic environment, where conserving energy was crucial for survival. But what made Nanuxaurus truly exceptional as a predator was how it combined this bite force with its other hunting adaptations. Its extraordinarily developed sense of smell meant it could track prey through snowstorms and darkness. Its binocular vision, another Tyrannosaur family trait, gave it excellent depth perception, crucial for judging striking distance in low light conditions. Recent studies of its brain case suggest it may have had enhanced blood flow to sensory organs, possibly allowing it to maintain high performance even in cold conditions. Evidence from bite marks found on prey species fossils in the same formation suggests that Nanuxaurus was capable of taking down animals much larger than itself. This included heavily armoured prey like Pachyrinosaurus, which had thick skull bones and horns for defence. The fact that Nanuxaurus could successfully hunt such well-defended prey speaks volumes about its capabilities as an apex predator. Unlike many of its contemporaries, Nanuxaurus was a year-round resident of the Arctic. This wasn't some summer tourist. It was a permanent local who had figured out how to make the most of both the endless summer days and the perpetual winter nights. Think of it as the prehistoric equivalent of those hardy folks who choose to live in Alaska year-round, except this resident was a several-ton predator with a bite that could shatter bones. What's particularly fascinating is how Nanuxaurus adapted its lifestyle to the extreme seasonal changes. During the summer months, when the sun barely set, it would have taken full advantage of the abundant prey that migrated to the region. These seasonal visitors including various species of hadrosaurs and ceratopsians, would have provided a vital food source that helped Nanuxaurus build up energy reserves for the challenging winter ahead. But perhaps most impressive was its ability to thrive during the dark winter months when many other species either migrated south or struggled to survive. Fossil evidence suggests that these polar tyrannosaurs didn't just survive the winter, they actively hunted through it, proving themselves to be one of the most adaptable predators of the late Cretaceous period. Here's something the fossil record hasn't told us yet, but recent studies of modern predators in extreme environments suggest Nanuxaurus might have been more social than we previously thought. In harsh environments like the Arctic, cooperation often proves more valuable than competition. Modern wolves, for instance, form tighter packs in more challenging territories. Could Nanuxaurus have employed similar strategies? Evidence from other tyrannosaurs and the challenging Arctic environment suggests these animals might have formed loose social bonds, perhaps coming together during the harshest winter months, when hunting alone would have been particularly challenging. Imagine a group of these giants, possibly related individuals, working together to survive the long polar night sharing kills and possibly even providing protection for their young. This social behaviour theory gains additional support from trackway evidence found in other Tyrannosaur species, showing multiple individuals moving in the same direction. While we haven't found such trackways for Nanuxaurus yet, the harsh Arctic environment would have made group living particularly advantageous. 
Just as modern polar predators often show more complex social behaviours than their temperate cousins, Nanuksaurus might have developed sophisticated group strategies to tackle the unique challenges of Arctic life. Nanuksaurus's reign lasted from around 70 to 68 million years ago, making it one of the last great predators of the Cretaceous period in the Arctic. Its ability to adapt and thrive in such extreme conditions showcases the remarkable adaptability of dinosaurs, challenging our perceptions of these ancient creatures. And while no trackways of Nanuxaurus have ever been found, the same can't be said for Carnotaurus. In South America, fossilized footprints reveal something shocking. This predator didn't just run, it barely ever missed. Those tracks tell a story of pursuit hunting so efficient failure was almost non-existent. So if you thought Nanuxaurus was impressive, wait until you see what speed and precision look like when pushed to the extreme. This is Roaring Echo. Until next time.